Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody had um, a good trading day. Um, pretty much played out like we talked about yesterday. Again, when we identified um, the possible reversal, okay, uh, midday yesterday, and we saw that, you know, really, really aggressive 4% uh, decline from the top to the bottom. Um, you know, we talked about this last night in the video, so it, it shouldn't have been any, you know, any surprise to anybody today that I was praying for a gap up. I said, please, market guys, just, just, just give us a gap up. And, you know, we got the gap up. You know, we, we got the gap up. And I, I said this last night in the video. I said this uh, yesterday on the Twitter feed. I said this morning. Um, Anybody who bought the gap up today in supply, I mean, I, I, I wanted to be a little more sensitive, but they were dead. They were absolutely dead. And, you know, we talked about this. So I could understand if you were a newer trader and you saw yesterday's reversal and you got caught in it, you know, we get it, right? Uh, but again, if you knew that information, especially if you watched the video last night, um, you know, I was kept on talking about it in the live webinar tonight, I, I, was, I wasn't 100% sell bias today, I was 1000% sell bias. And uh, every single time there was an uptick in the morning, all I kept on saying was, I don't wanna buy anything. I literally don't wanna buy anything. And if you look at what happened today, again, today was day two of you know, the plunging, right? Day two of uh, the nasty sell off in the morning. Uh, if you look at the final, you know, at the final numbers today, uh, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you know, it looks pretty good, right? 500 point move in the Dow. Uh, and I really had to ask that question. I go, was the market up or down today? It all, I guess it all depends uh, what you looked at. It all depends where you're trading, where your focus is. But again, it really does show you how, um, you know, anybody who's been doing this for a very, very long time, again, not that anybody's smarter than anybody else. I'm sure it's all not smarter than anybody. But again, the, the longer that you see repetition, this is kind of what we try to, um, you know, really press the idea of screen time. Even if you are not actively trading, the screen time that you get, right? You got six, wait, let's just call it six. Six hours a day, right? Six hours a day, uh, five days a week, okay? So you have 30 hours a week of screen time, 120 hours of screen time throughout the month. And again, if you add those numbers up, that's a lot of time that you are building your mental Rolodex. So the more times you see a scenario like this play out, very aggressive reversal, uh, gap up in the market and continuation, you know there's a high probability there's gonna be a follow through. Again, obviously if you're trading a year or so, two years or so, again, th these are baby steps. These are things uh, you haven't come across, but again, things in time will get e easier, will get better. Like I've, I've been saying for years, you know, you're, you're going to be a better trader year five than you are year one. You're going to be a better trader year 20 than you are year 10. So all these things that, um, you know, we're seeing right now. Uh, and again, I've been saying experience uh, is much more important than luck. You know, you can, you can be lucky in a trade, but again, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, especially an aggressive driven uh, headline rapid fluid market like this, you're going to give it all back. And for the, you know, for the amounts of money that people were chasing uh, at any given point, again, we, we joked around the George Costanza market. We joked around uh, the scenario that you can buy anywhere and sell higher. Well, that market is gone right now. Okay. Uh, at least for the time being, the good news is um, the market did exactly what they had to do. And again, if you didn't participate uh, in the market for the last 24 hours, or uh, you were kind of, you know, a little bit uncertain what to do, you missed the sell off, right? And that's a good thing, I guess, especially if you're a newer trader and you didn't kind of have a lot of conviction where to go, you kind of missed the selling. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, and again, if you notice here, again, stocks went and go from uh, demand to demand to demand, you know, we just quite didn't touch uh, this rising support. But again, this is all we were looking for than when we started the broadcast a couple of days ago saying, hey, this is kind of the reality. And again, if you look at 
uh, what the market did today held, especially on the Qs, they held here, they held here, they held here, they held here, you know, they held all this whole range. This is a bullish thing, okay? That's the good news. So you got the sell-off out of the way. If you did participate in the sell-off, fantastic. There was definitely, we'll, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, ridiculous follow-through today. Again, I know a lot of you guys uh, caught some of these moves. Insane, right? Insane two-day moves of rug pull. But the most important part was the selling is out of the way, at least for now. Again, obviously, any close below 250 on the Qs is a you know ins instantaneous next leg down. Uh, but at least on the surface, you got the selling out of the way. If you were a long bias trader and kind of sat on the sidelines the last 48 hours or 20, 36 hours, you're fine now. And the good part of it is just from a technical point of view, okay, uh, this put in a close that reclaimed the 10-day moving average uh, and now needs to reclaim the five. That's the good news. The bad news is when you get a sell-off like this, okay, and this was a very, very aggressive sell-off, okay, um, you're talking about Q's going from 270 to roughly 250, you have 20 points of selling in the Q's in 24 hours, 36 hours, that's kind of a big deal. And what that's going to happen is, unlike a lot of other days or a lot of other scenarios that you saw gradual selling for two, three days, that the candles, even though they could be aggressive, they could be, you know, very, very structured. This is, an, you know, this is basically in a two, two candle scenario. So the bad news is you're going to fall into a lot of categories that stocks are just entering. And if they rally back tomorrow, they're going to be rally in, into, into supply. So for example, if you look at uh, Tesla, again, even though it held the five day moving average and reclaimed for, for Tesla to go higher. Okay. And I'm not talking about catching a trade from today's close to 590. I'm talking about for Tesla from macro to go higher, okay, it's gonna need to either reclaim 1590 on a close, and for Tesla to go lower, it's gonna need to reclaim 1794. So you can see that the macro range here, although it's, it's incredibly impressive and 100 points is phenomenal, and you could definitely make money within that range. That's the whole point of the sneaky pivots. Just understand from a macro point of view, it's not going anywhere until it confirms macro, okay? So if you look at the 60 minute supply, you can see every single time it kept on rallying, today got rejected, rally rejected, rally rejected. It didn't just start, uh, stop with, with Tesla. Again, you look at Amazon, same thing. Look at Netflix, the same thing. Look at Roku, the same thing. So you kind of get the point, right? Facebook, the same thing. So all these stocks are, all these stocks are under supply. Uh, and even though I, I believe, right, based on, unless some crazy, you know, some crazy news comes out, I believe we'll have some sort of debt cat bounce tomorrow, just, just from the point of, you know, how the, you know, how the market closed, reclaimed the 10 day moving average. I, I would bet there's some sort of debt cat bounce tomorrow. I really do. The problem is every single chart. Okay. I went through many charts today after the close. And although I, you know, I caught some, you know, I found some pretty cool charts and I think they're good. Let me just share a couple of, um, let me just, um, let me just share a couple of charts for tomorrow, just to give you an idea. Um, not the, I, I don't want to use the word desperate, right? I don't want to use the word desperate, but obviously for all you guys, especially on, on the, on the, on the Twitter feed and everybody in the live webinar, you kind of know we're pretty beta heavy on our email watch. And you know, since everything's in the middle of the range, we have to be a little bit more creative. Obviously, we'll have to watch out tomorrow for some option news, some some sort of catalyst. But I found myself with stocks like this, right, on the watch list tonight. FUL. And even though FUL is a beautiful looking chart, I've never heard of it. I don't know what the hell this is, right? Just to give you an idea. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Alcoa, right? When was the last time you saw Alcoa? Oh, excuse me, not Alcoa. Um, yeah, Alcoa. When was the last time you saw Alcoa on, on anywhere, anything I do? So you kind of get the point, even though they're pretty good looking charts and if they confirm uh, both tomorrow, they look good. So this, this string of events, if you look at tonight's uh, uh, email alert, you'll, you'll see, right? You'll see just a bunch of like names, okay? A uh, bunch of names, good looking charts, but again, that's not my sweet spot. So what does that tell you into tomorrow? So I always tell everybody, uh, especially new traders, I say to, my, I say to people all the time, look, your trading account is like a high performance sports car, whatever that high performance sports car you want to be, a Porsche, 
Ferrari, Bugatti, Bentley, whatever your, your favorite car is, okay? No matter how aggressive that car is, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to perform if it's stuck in midtown Manhattan rush hour traffic. If, you, if one of you guys have never been to Manhattan, at 5 o'clock in Manhattan, midtown, it, it's, like a, it's like a parking lot, okay? You're not moving. It's going to take you two hours to get across town, okay? So you have to use that psychology as, as a trader as well. Just because you have a high-powered process or you think you know what you're doing and you've built the level of consistency, whatever the case may be, sometimes you have to kind of look at the landscape of, of, of what's going on and say to yourself, it's time to scale down. It's time to sh downshift, right? It's time to do whatever I have to do because again, we're not trading because the market's open, we're trading because we have value. And I'm, I'm telling you as the day is long tomorrow, you're going to have a choppy market tomorrow. I'm telling you, okay? It's, it's, you, all you have to do is look at charts. All you have to do is look at 60 minutes supply on your favorite stock and you'll notice high probability than not, you'll have a stock that's underneath supply. So if the market is gonna wake up and beta is gonna wake up, tomorrow's session in a weird way. And again, mentally I'm already prepared for it, okay? So there's not gonna be any uh, disappointment, any letdown. Mentally, I already know it's going to take the market a couple of days to reclaim supply. And if you look at the queues, okay, they're going to need to reclaim the five-day moving average to have any shock to go back to the highs. So knowing this, okay, if, especially if you're a new trader, I'm okay with taking one, two, maybe three trades for the day, you know, maybe scalping. Again, my mindset for tomorrow is just scalp mode. I, I, I can't see, again, I could be wrong and I could be very pleasantly surprised but I can't see a scenario that we get an expanded channels to the upside tomorrow. To the downside, absolutely, right? Of course, you know, we could get rejected off today's levels, start rolling around and start confirming channels back to the downside. So that I can see, but I can't imagine based on, again, what we're seeing in, in random names, Facebook and all, even though, again, these are bullish hammers and I do expect an upward day, upward doesn't mean a runaway train. Upward just means, well, we closed higher than we opened, right? Or we closed higher than we closed. So it's gonna take the bulls a lot of work. And again, if you are a new trader, again, put your emotions away, okay? Take down your expectations. Number one, you shouldn't have any expectations. Again, that is an emotional uh, choice that you're making that belongs nowhere near trading. And tomorrow's session, my only goal tomorrow, you know, wait for the setups, take some cash flow, second entries on everything, I, I'm looking at tomorrow's day, again, unless I'm completely wrong and I'm pleasantly surprised, I'm looking at Thursday's session as a sacrificial lamb and we're going to get much more clarity come Friday. Number one, it's always op option expiration. Number two, usually you're gonna get your, your ranges exp uh, expanded uh, after a longer week. We've been seeing that now for, uh, for several years now. Um, so that's kind of it, you know, that's kind of it. And again, it, it's, it's not a level of, uh, it's not a level of losing face or trying to pretend you're smarter than you are. This is the reality. Again, you have to be an adult. You have to be mature enough to understand when to get, you know, get into the car and put your foot on the gas and when it's time to just kind of put it into drive and just cruise, right? And just cruise, start, stop, start, stop. So again, you know, change your speed tomorrow. Uh, lower your expectation, definitely take down your tier size, 100%. If we're looking for a ping pong effect tomorrow, potential a chop factor, the last thing you wanna do is trade full size. If certain names wake up, and again, obviously you guys are on the, on the email, you'll know what they are. If they confirm and wake up and there's rotation on those names, who's better than us, right? But again, we can't assume that's gonna happen. We need technical analysis uh, to confirm. So going into tomorrow, uh, upside bias, 65, 35, right? Again, if that's, if that's a lot of conviction, uh, cash flow, uh, cash flow mode tomorrow, a lot of patience, a lot of data being um, absorbed. Because again, a lot of times when you get these sacrificial days, it's almost like a baseball analogy. You're just doing the little things. They're not necessarily showing up on the scoreboard tomorrow but that's gonna kind of set you up for uh, the future. So let's talk about today's action. Again, uh, the plan was anything that gaps up, starts losing the previous day's ranges, they're gonna get killed. And they just went one by one. I got, you know, this is, you know, value this morning again, 
Uh, to the downside, after yesterday's reversal, I want to give the Bears every opportunity to confirm. Remember, don't anticipate the move. Uh, wait patiently. It's crucial second entries and everything. Uh, good morning. So they got murdered. I mean, the stocks got absolutely murdered today. Netflix, uh, the levels are uh, 523, 521, measure potential for initial net measure potential to 515. Uh, Netflix turned around and said, hold my beer, forget about 515. It took out this whole range here, it took out 21 and went all the way down to 490, destruction. Again, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna sound very enthusiastic with these moves because it's such, been a, such a long day. And again, for all you guys who don't know, I speak seven hours a day, every single day. So by the time I start recording this video, all of my enthusiasm, I don't care how good of a day it was, all my enthusiasm is gone. So we're, we're just, you know, we're not talking about, you know, we're not cheerleading here. We're not putting away pom-poms. These are just reality of what, you know, putting in a process, doing the homework and let it kind of play out the next day. Uh, Amazon and watch, uh, experienced traders, watch for green to red. It went to green, went green to red pre-market, but I noted 3067 is the big line in the sand for macro downside. Uh, Amazon got murdered, absolutely murdered. Here is the 3067. Um, you know, went down like 125 points. Again, boring, right? Uh, Apple murdered again, 381 five-day support if it builds below can flush. And again, I, I was literally, I don't think we had, maybe we had one um, pivot to the upside, but here is the pivot right here. Uh, the 381 went all the way down to 375. Uh, Microsoft got murdered, uh, 206 and a quarter, 206 if it builds below can flush. So you, you kind of get the point. Everything was... Uh, sell bias again. Here's the th uh, 206 and a quarter. Uh, 206 went all the way down to uh, 202. Uh, Nvidia got destroyed as well. 401 if it builds below can flush. Here was Nvidia, right? So here's the 401 went all the way down to 391. Uh, Tesla sneaky areas uh, 1540, 1530 if it builds below can flush. Second entries on everything. The second entry on Tesla was 1518. And it got destroyed. It got absolutely destroyed. So here was the 1518. It went all the way down uh, to 1431. So again, you could see how aggressive uh, these ranges were. Uh, NKLA 52 if it builds below can flush. NKLA, I think it only went down a dollar. I didn't trade it today, so I have no idea. Uh, yeah, it only went down a dollar. But again, is a dollar the worst thing in the world? So uh, NKLA. Uh, Roku, again, 147 held twice if it builds below can flush. Here was Roku, right? Here's Roku, 147, 147, went all the way down uh, to 142. Again, huge washes. Uh, shop, I caught a piece of this trade as well. I just didn't get the size that I wanted. Uh, 932, 931, if it builds below, can flush more. Again, again, you get the routine. I mean, all these names just got destroyed. So here was uh, 932, right? 932 and just got murdered. Went all the way down to 900 before it rebounded. Uh, Zoom got murdered. Well, it got destroyed. Uh, nine, uh, zoom 256, if it builds below, can flush, right? 256, and it went all the way down to 240, got fisted. Nicest way I could say it. Um, Square, you know, I caught Square for like a dollar and change, uh, and, it, and it just imploded more. Uh, square, 1650, 16, if it builds below, can flush. So here was Square, right? Here was Square. As I was covering my last piece, I'm talking about three seconds later, it went down another four dollars. So it went all the way down to eleven. Yeah. So that's that there. Uh, Boeing never got down to the seventy-three, and that's it. You know, seventy-three. You know, bang, schmoom, zoom, destroyed. Blah blah blah. You get the picture. Uh, you know, you get the picture. Every, you know, everything did very very well. Uh, and I think this was the only. I, I think this was the only. Uh, long pivot we had and, and again just kind of show you how there's just not a lot of emphasis today uh, to the upside mRNA 75 rejected three times needs to build and again only put up like a, you know 50 cent candle right oh now it's going and now it's going for all you guys I was about to say there was a lot of August a 95 calls I know some of you guys are along the 95 calls this is just all new to me right now so congratulations uh, for all you guys who just took a scalp, it only went up 50 cents. But for all you guys who are along the August 95 calls, I, I haven't checked the news, obviously, they just saw this now, but it looks pretty damn good. So congrats to you guys who have that. So again, uh, solid work today. Tomorrow, I am expecting uh, some sort of chop fest, but that's okay, right? That's okay. It's all about being an adult 
It's all about being uh, mature and it's all about staying in business. Guys, God, God bless. Love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.